Uh, thank you, everybody, for coming. Uh, my name is Michael Peralta. I'm the Assistant Administrator for the Franklin Regional Transit Authority. Uh, my name is Raleigh Kane. I'm the Assistant General Manager for Franklin Transit Management, the company that runs the FRTA. Uh, so we're here tonight um, to discuss uh, some potential route changes for our fixed route system. And uh, we have a slideshow just to go over some of the highlights with what we're proposing. Um, and then we can open up the floor to um, questions. And uh, afterwards, uh, in the back of the room, uh, we have some more information uh, from the slides if you wanted to look at uh, time schedules and maps. And uh, we have um, uh, paper and pen if you wanted to leave comments by the end of tonight before we leave, uh, written comments, and we'll take all those back as well. Um, so we'll, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, so we'll let you take it from here. Thanks, Michael. Uh, so like I said, my name is Raleigh Kane. I'm the Assistant General Manager for Franklin Transit Management, the company that runs the FRTA. And we're here to discuss proposed service changes that may be effective uh, September 1st. July 1st is the published date, but the, uh, the timeline may be pushed back to September 1st for more time for planning and public comment. So just an overview of the changes. The project has a few goals, decreasing travel time, adding express trips, targeting where we need to actually go with the bus system, encouraging transfers, uh, where we actually need to go with the bus system. Uh, a lot of what we do is historical and perhaps no longer necessary. Uh, we want to encourage transfers between FRTA and PVTA as well as with MART in orange. We're going to be adjusting departure schedules to provide uh, better options for people who want to have connections, get elsewhere besides downtown Greenfield. And we want to, at the end of the project, encourage increased ridership. So the entire goal at the end of this is to have an increased ridership on the system. Okay. Uh, to summarize the uh, planned route changes, we are splitting the Route 21, the Greenfield downtown route, into two bus routes. The names and the colors are not so necessary as um, the ideas behind them. Right now we have an eastbound and a westbound. We would be splitting them into kind of a targeted service. Perhaps we don't need to go all around town throughout the entire day. Main themes running through that, those two changes. Uh, route 22, the Greenfield Montague route is slated for discontinuance. There are a variety of reasons, one of which being duplication of bus routing with other FRTA bus routes. Um, we have a plan to address service areas with this discontinuance. The 23 Sunderland via Montague Center um, is being modified slightly. Um, the proposed timetable you'll see is uh, not too drastically different than what is currently run, but I can explain the, ch the uh, differences. The Northampton route that runs through South Deerfield, the 31, we are looking to add express trips, and you'll see in the proposed timetable. Uh, it would continue to serve Northampton, Waitley, Hatfield, and Deerfield. Orange has minor changes regarding departure times and arrival times in Greenfield and Orange. Uh, 41 Charlemont, same difference. I mean, same idea. Departure times in Greenfield and Charlemont are adjusted. And then uh, the 65, the downtown Greenfield parking shuttles would be also slated for discontinuance. Be canceled. So 20 and 21 are the two bus routes that would be created out of the current Route 21, which runs eastbound and westbound. There's a 21 eastbound direction and a 21 westbound direction. Uh, this is not only confusing, but it leads to big headways, large headways between stops. Uh, for instance, some stops have a bus every two hours, some stops have a bus every three hours, some stops have a bus every 45 minutes. There's a very, there's a wide variety of arrival times. It's not predictable. It's really not fitting one demand. It's trying to fit too many demands in one bus route. So we're going to split it apart. Where do we have to go all day? Where do we have to go some of the day? The Locations we have to address throughout the entire day would land on the 21 Greenfield. The places we have to address, uh, such as Greenfield Community College, commuter times, um, this is one example, but those would be broken out of the 21 schedule and put onto a 20 schedule, which would run partial day service. Kind of a targeted get them there, get them back, as opposed to the entire route running around town all day, every day. Uh, the main difference between the 20 and 21 proposal and the Route 21 as it currently runs is that we would no longer be servicing High Street and the High Rise in downtown Greenfield with the downtown Greenfield bus route. High Street would be addressed with the 23. 
taken off Deerfield Street and run up High Street, up into Montague over the Gill Montague Bridge. So we're not so much losing service to that corridor, we're just shifting it to another bus route. And you'll see how the timetable interacts in a little bit. Uh, this is the proposed timetable for 20. Through discussions in other communities, we've realized that what you're about to see for the 21 timetable is very truncated. If you imagine that they're being switched, where 20 is the small schedule and 21 is the large schedule. So Greenfield downtown would remain an all-day service, about 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. You can see we pick and choose on the right-hand side of the timetable when we address the corporate center. It would not be every hour, It'd be like every two hours. It's very small. Um, but it's on the right-hand side of the timetable. Where all the dots are is where we don't provide service at that time. So if you read across, it would just skip between Big Y Plaza and Main Street Greenfield. And then some loops or some trips, it would service the corporate center up and around. That's the main premise beyond, uh, behind it, that specific location. Uh, yeah, 21. That's the map. So if you look at the map, on the far right-hand side, we have the JWO Transit Center in the bottom right-hand corner. Can you actually go and point? Oh, I can, yeah, absolutely. We usually have a laser pointer. Uh, so right here we have the JWO, the downtown Greenfield Transit Center. The bus would then depart up Federal Street, up Cherry Run Plaza, across Silver Street, up to Latin Mills, down Elm Street, GCC, Big Y. It would pick and choose the times of day services the Corporal Center, and then go back down Main Street to the JWO. So we have a counterclockwise travel around Greenfield. As opposed to the 21, which would be the, the, the shortened schedule coming up in a second. 21 would travel in the opposite direction around town, getting people to the transit center in the morning for their morning connections and away from their housing complexes. So you see the map in a second, it makes no sense. It also would not service High Street, it would service basically the same roads as the Greenfield downtown bus route in the opposite direction. So, for instance, it's a much smaller timetable. It's only a morning commuter route and some afternoon kind of background feeder service. Uh, but the map is very similar. The only difference being the direction of travel. So to start the JWO, you go down Main Street to either GCC. The corporate center is not here because through other discussions, we've realized that we go back onto the schedule. But the main idea is to start the transit center, go down Main Street, GCC up to Lyden Woods and all the apartment complexes along Elm Street, across Silver Street, down Federal Street to the JWO. So in the morning, we would be collecting everyone at the housing complexes and bringing them to the downtown transfer center to make their connections to Greenfield, Orange, Northampton, Sunderland, wherever they may be going. And in the afternoon, the other bus route would bring them back away from the transit center to the housing complexes. The people that were in the bottom left section here, yes. they have to travel all the way up there to get back to, to, to the center of town there? Correct. Correct. In the, there is some overlap with the schedule, so you would not have to take this bus route. You could take the Greenville in town bus route, which would go down Main Street in the opposite direction. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to take the tour of Greenville, for lack of a better word. Lack of a better phrase. Okay. 23. I have more notes, I guess. The 23 schedule would still be servicing Greenfield, Millers Falls, Montague Center, and before arriving in Sunderland to make connections for PBTA towards UMass. Uh, we would be, once again, one of the major goals is to adjust departure times to make the whole transfer system work better. We can't have buses departing before other major bus routes arrive. It doesn't make any sense. The system is not meant to work like that. So we would adjust the schedule to accommodate transfers coming from out of town. Right now it's meant for if you live downtown Greenfield, you can catch this bus and go wherever you want. But we want to take a holistic approach and look at it systematically. So if I'm coming from Hatfield, I need to go to UMass. I can take, hypothetically, the 31 to Greenfield, transfer to the 23 towards UMass. Or if I need to go to Turner's Falls, same idea. Right now that misses itself. And that's not really helping anyone, so we're going to make that, that correction. Uh, the routing would be changed from Deerfield Street to High Street. So right now, 22, 23, and 32 all leave the transit, uh, the transit center, travel south, and then west along, uh, east along Deerfield Street. 
which is not as populated or as useful to anyone as High Street would be. High Street has housing complexes, it has a stop and shop, and it has a direct connection to Turner's Falls over the Gill Montague Bridge. So by sending it up in that direction, we have more opportunities for people to use the bus route other than just going to its end destination. Right now it's meant for you get on the bus and you want to end up in Sunderland going to UMass. The way this would be scheduled, uh, structured is you can hop on the bus and go to Stop and Shop. It would not need to, you wouldn't have to be going to the end point of the bus route. It's addressing a different customer base. Uh, so if we look at the schedule, it reflects as such. So by taking the High Street corridor off the 21, we make that a faster bus route. By putting it onto the 23, we allow more people to catch the bus going to different places. So from the downtown transit center, you can hop on the bus at 645. Again, throughout these timetables, the times are not so much as important as the concepts themselves. These times have changed since we even published this document. We just haven't been able to update it yet. And that was through conversations in other communities like this. So if you have suggestions or you point that you have a glaring um, issue with the time, um, we, we of course want to hear about it, but the times are not so much the main point of, of the uh, discussion that I have today. So for this buster, you leave downtown Greenfield, travel up High Street Pass, the Wilton Apartments, Bay State Franklin, Stop and Shop, up and over the Yomani Bridge, and downtown Turner's Falls, Abbey and Third. You would then travel on the same route as it currently does to Millers Falls, past Industrial Complex, down to Montague Center, and then finally to Sunderland and Sugarloaf Estates to make connections to the PBT 31 for GMAS. Um, the overall travel time between downtown Greenfield and Sunderland and then to UMass would not be getting any longer. If anything, it's going to get shorter because of uh, these basic inefficiencies in how much time was given to begin with when this public schedule was published last July. So by reevaluating how long it actually get, takes to get places, we can shorten the travel time. Where there was eight incidents somewhere, you can actually travel in six, so we give you seven. Things like that. But these little minor improvements along the way add up to ten minutes the end of the line, which is one of the biggest uh, projects we've had so far. Um, this schedule has you arriving, leaving us at 45 and arriving at Sunderland at 7.45. A new iteration of the schedule has you arriving in Sunderland at 6.30 and being at UMass by 7.45. So you can leave downtown Greenfield and arrive at UMass TRC in one hour, which is the way that the 23 used to run before we made changes last July. So the travel time is being reset. Anything else? This um, seems a good time to ask you, yes. how do you establish these changes are you have you been interviewing the regular users yeah. is that how you've done this uh, so we have a variety of ways to collect information we run surveys along the bus routes where people are getting on where people are getting off the sort of basic transit operations like baseline information gathering our drivers are a great source of information because they know how long it takes to get places they know how many people to pick up and they know if this road is wider than that road so it's better to drive that in this road things like that um, we are also currently riding our own uh, Continually writing our own system. Uh, anything that doesn't make sense to us probably doesn't make sense to begin with. Um, we've just made a bunch of notes over here. This is a culmination of all of our observations. Um, beyond that, we can look at the GPS system for the buses. We can see the travel time. We can look back four months and see what the bus did on Tuesday five months ago. It's a great source of information as well. Right. So, are there any other questions about 23? Is there a map? The map and the maps in the back. I think maps in the back. Oh, there is a map. There is a map. In the back of the room. We have maps on the table in the back in the 23 room. It didn't make it into the platform. Um, so 31, Northampton. Uh, this is probably the most important to this discussion because it runs through Deerfield, Waitley, Hatfield. Uh, the tw 31, if anything, is going to get a whole lot faster simply by picking and choosing when we service the high school and Pelican products. Right now, we're doing this whole loop-de-loop-de-loop -de -loop -de -loop around 5 and 10 South Deerfield Center, the high school Pelican products, every single trip, both directions. And it just wastes a whole bunch of time. Uh, the bullet points as stated in the project include minor adjustments to travel times um, for better transfers between us and PVTA, one of the, the higher up stated goals. We want to provide an additional 11 o'clock trip. This states a 7 p.m. trip, but we've uh, determined that's no longer possible. 
So we will not be in this proposal including a 7 p.m. trip out of Greenfield, but we will be including an 11 a.m. trip out of Greenfield. We want to introduce express trips throughout the day to decrease the travel time to around 45 minutes between Greenfield and Northampton. Uh, if you can drive it in 35 and the bus takes an hour and five, you're not taking the bus. It's as simple as that. So in order to induce ridership and to have, perhaps get some of the choice people to leave their cars in Greenfield or in Northampton and to hop on the FRTA service, we need to get that travel time down. Yes? So what does it mean in terms of a Frontier Regional School? So Frontier would be serviced at the school times as applicable. So you'll see in the timetable in a second, but what we currently do is we go there in the morning, get all the kids to school, and then we keep going there all day throughout the day. Whereas we know no one's gonna get on and get off because they're all in school. That's what it comes down to, or they should all be in school. <laughs> um, so by targeting specifically when we need to get kids to school and away from school, we can save a whole bunch of time throughout the middle of the day, and time translates directly into money. So for Route 31 directly, the time savings, the money savings we accumulate by picking and choosing when we go to the high school and Pelican products, we have bought and paid for the 11 o'clock trip. What do, you, do you know about the ridership for both of those places? Uh, I don't have hard numbers for this, but we do have soft numbers. Soft numbers, uh, not great. I can, I yeah. can speak for Frontier. Yeah. Um, this year, we're averaging four. Yeah. Years past, it's been higher, mm -hmm. up to 10. Um, but we do have students coming from um, North and Greenfield. School, school choice. School students. choice students. Um, students placed uh, through foster who, who would be in special education services, therefore ineligible for specialized transportation, right. take the bus. And um, they, so this year there's four. Um, exactly. At least it's in the past and has been higher, but right now I would agree we're seeing about four or five people on average per day. Yes. You mentioned that uh, you're going to plan to continue to run it at school time. Correct. Now, what about uh, running when the, I don't know how many kids uh, depart the bus and walk over to the elementary school that are school choice kids, mm -hmm. and whether it fits into their time schedule or not. The other thing is there's so many days of the year that they have early release from both the grammar school and the high school. Mm -hmm. And is the bus going to be available for those early release days? For those children? Um, the answer is we would, we would want it to be. What's that? Uh, the answer is we would want it to be available for those kids to take the bus to from school, see if they get out at 11 o'clock or so. I don't have the hard time well, for I think an early the, release day. The, so the, the, the yeah. release time for an early release day for Frontier is 12.45. 12.45. And for the elementary school, it's 1.30? Um, 1.15, 1.30, somewhere yeah. in there. I'm not sure. When does the normal school day end? Normal school day for Frontier is 2.15. 2 and 3 p.m. for elementary. Okay. But I have a suggestion for you. Absolutely. If you're saying you're talking about the fact that you're having to double back going to Pelican and around, um, have you thought about going to the, the business center at the old Hillside Nursing Home, going up Hill, North Hillside Road, and then coming back down Hillside? going by Pelican and going uh, by Frontier. Yep. And I don't know that you're going to be adding any miles to it, and it would might service something at the at that business center, and it might not. I don't know whether there's anybody there would take the bus. Um, so we actually brought that up internally as well. Uh, the issue with Hillside Road and North Hillside Road is the width of the road and the travel lane. But it's a legal highway. It is, but for our comfort level with the vehicles and our operators, we don't want to put a bus that's you know, 102 inches wide in a road that's 100 inches wide per travel lane. It's it's just a comfort factor for us. We we realistically could do it, but doing it all day every day with a large coach vehicle. I'm not saying is, all yeah. day every day. I'm just saying if yeah you, for that specific travel. Lane. Yeah. Okay. Um, we did we did take a look at that, and I actually took a bus out and drove it myself. Um, but we're not currently exploring that as an option, simply because of the road the road width. Okay. Yeah. And when you're coming down. On your express trip, mm -hmm. you're going to go to the park and ride in Waitley? Correct. So, um, so the, the bus, the, the door will be closed going through the town of Deerfield? Incorrect. No, it would not be. No, it so stops at everyone. It will. You're correct. So the way the, that we're modeling the express trips is, is that it would be... This is the one that's going down 91? It would go down 91, correct. So where is it going to stop in Deerfield? 
So uh, leaving Greenfield, it would continue normal service from Greenfield Center to South Deerfield Center. Via it's 5 and 10 through, Elm Street. Pull through the center of town? Yep, if you want to get off on Mag Magic Wings on 5 and 10, you're more than welcome to do that. The only point it would be express is on I-91, where we can't pick anyone or drop anyone off anyway. Yeah, but I... Yeah. But where is your... He's asking, so, where is your stop? In South Deerfield Center, it would be where the, the old... Uh, we currently have a sign that's over by the cemetery. Um, it's been up there since we changed our routes a couple years right ago. near your property, Jane. Mm -hmm. yeah. I actually put a bench there oh. for people to sit. Thank you. Um, so we're looking to continue to reestablish service at that bus stop. So we'll be traveling Elm Street over the tracks, straight through the four-way, down Sugarloaf Street to 116, Waitley Park and Ride. Um, an express would then hop on 91 South to King Street. Uh, Non-express would travel down 5 and 10 through Hatfield, Waitley, all the way to uh, King Street. And when you get the... You might want to think about, now that Hatfield's part of the system, mm -hmm. you might think about going down, uh, by turning by the Castaways, mm -hmm. going down, I'm not sure what the name of it is. Christian, Christian, Christian Lane. Christian, go down, down to, Christian Lane. To Whaley Center. And then get the, take the fork, or I mean the, the right, and go into Hatfield, and you can go by the senior centers and what have you in Hatfield, and what have you, you may pick up some ridership more so than you're going to get from 5 and 10. Or you maybe do it one part of the day or what have you. But you might pick up some ridership. Okay. That's a good one. Yep, we haven't currently looked at that, but thank you for bringing it And when you come back, where's the stop in, in your South Deerfield? It, South, it would be the current shared PBTA FRTA bus stop. Um, across across from like the firehouse, the old firehouse, I think it is. Well, she no, owns the old firehouse. Yeah, that's the same one you just talked about in front of the cemetery. Um, on the other side of the road, the one that PBTA stops at in the morning. Okay. Yeah, at the... Uh, in front of CISO. Yes, correct. Yes. So, um, hi, I'm Wendy Fox. I'm the town oh. minister. Hi. Hi. Um, I exchanged some email with Tina. Okay. She said something about a bus shelter. Were you going to talk about that today at all? Or? Uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not, not familiar with that conversation. Uh, just that she said we were talking about possibly bus shelters in your Okay. Okay. Yeah, I mean, okay. I mean, we certainly <laughs> can consider bus shelters. Um, she brought it up, so sure. I, I don't know what the need is or. Uh, I, I wasn't part of the conversation, so I can't I can't speak How to that. How do you determine when? And who I'm sorry. Oh, uh, Raleigh Kane, I'm the assistant general manager. I'm or Michael Peralta, I'm the assistant administrator. Yeah. Yes. How do you determine when uh, a shelter is called for? Um. For the most part. It comes from uh, requests um, from either riders or from the town level. Um, and then at that point, we would have to evaluate um, to see if there's enough space at the stop to uh, house a shelter, um, what type of other structural improvements would need to be made to bring it uh, to make sure that this shelter is uh, fully accessible. Um, so there's a lot of different factors in there, but um, we can certainly consider uh, almost any bus stop for bus shelter. I can tell you that the one so. in front of CESA has all the people sitting on the sidewalk yeah. gathering. I don't know how many of you need to count in order to, and I'm not out there counting all of that. Whereas across the street from me, next to the cemetery, I only see one person at a time. Okay. For some reason. Okay. It's definitely so, something we can evaluate. But if this gets better, I'll be one of those people. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you. We'd love yes, to sir. have you. My next question. Mm -hmm. Decorating the buses, too. If and when the bridge on North Main Street is fixed, yep. I would like to make sure that, uh, that it would go down North Main Street. So we were actually just talking about that as well. Do you have any information regarding that? Yeah. Well, there were plans and everything else drawn 15, 20 years ago, and there were hearings and everything else, and there was some political interference. And I think it's been successfully stalled. Wendy may have more of an update. Yeah. Well, turning around at Pelican Products is not ideal for us. We we have to do it because there's no other suitable locations. But if that bridge were to be repaired so that it can carry one of our transit buses, uh, which I believe weigh up to 20, 20 uh, no more well, than 20 we, tons. We, we, we tons. Yeah. the tip list so they might. Know. We might so that would be a bridge replacement from the, the Stimulate tip. some uh, juice on it if uh, 
the Transit Authority were to write a letter and complain about the fact that these routes were having to be changed because of the substandard bridge. Mm -hmm. I would highly advocate for the Deerfield representative on the Transit Authority Board to uh, bring that up at their next board meeting. Well, I, Me too. I would like you to put it on the agenda, my friend. <laughs> or you could bring it up at, at a future at, a TPO no, meeting. I'm asking you to put it on the agenda. <laughs> So oh, noted. <laughs> yes, he is. Yes, oh, is. So, so noted. <laughs> I would let him uh, introduce himself if he so chooses. Yeah. Would you like to introduce yourself? You know what, James. Yeah, but the whole public that's oh. watching up today. Yeah. We are televised today. Yeah. I've been, uh, my name is Bob Decker. I've been a member of the Regional Transit Authority for better than 20 odd years. Okay. Thank you. He's our town's representative. So the, technically the chairman of the Board of Selectmen that's that person's job, but they long ago Betty Kirkwood handed it to me. So they point me every year. When it used to be called the horse and carriage experience. No, it wasn't that far. The trolley, right? <laughs> no, but, but you know that that bridge needs to get fixed, and it, it got politically shelved 15, 20 years ago, and. Uh, they, they posted it and everything else, but there are plans that are drawn, including land takings, et cetera, that if you go on the registry of deeds, you can find records of it. Okay. I'll add that to my list. Yeah, I think the only comment we can like afford is that if the weight, rim, weight limit on that bridge were to be raised, it was something we could definitely look at servicing in that direction. In the back of the room, we do. I just want to make sure that the citizens of Deerfield don't lose service. And, right. you know, there were a lot of people that have been, I don't know how many take it now, but there were a lot of people used to walk down from Callaher Drive and walk down and take the bus to go to work at certain shops in Greenfield on a consistent, every day, for years. Okay. The person passed away, so that person's not taking that trip anymore. Sure. But, uh, you know, there is a need for people, and it, if it goes right through the, center, the heart of town, and it's... Ideal. Sure. We agree. Happy. Are, Absolutely. I assume you're aware of the proposed making it, okay, the um, 70 unit, 55 and over uh, condominium development basically at the corner. On Sugar Love Street. 116. Okay. 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 No, I was not aware. Okay. That's but if we could talk offline afterward, I'd be interested yeah. in hearing. But you go by there, I think, anyway, when you come yes, from the I park and ride. Don't you go down to the traffic light and then come up Sugarloaf Street? You're correct. This proposal would have us traveling both directions on Sugarloaf Street. Yeah, but um, throughout the day. you're going to go right by where the yep. project is. Okay. Any other questions regarding uh, this? You want to yeah. Route? Would you like to ride in the bus? I just want to advocate for my students and make sure that it's right behind me over here. Times won't be it? altered or taken away from them in order to travel. Yes. If anything, we want to make it as convenient for them as possible, not to have Thank to you. guess which bus they want. Appreciate that. Yeah. I, this is probably a little hard to see, um, but um, um, certainly after, afterwards we can um, go and look at the mapping and time schedules and, and talk more specifically with yeah. okay. if, if they're, we, we set them up to, to meet the needs and specifically targeting those things. For instance, this, uh, what time do you get out of school? You said 2.15. 2.15 on an average day. Okay. Um, it's a little tiny, but the, uh, the <coughs> one o'clock line we've been passing Frontier High School 222. Great. So it, it's the specific like limiting of that. Yeah. Awesome. So I was reading the stories in the paper about people pushing for weekend service in Greenfield. Correct. Can you do an update on that? We're going to get to that in oh, a couple sorry. more slides. Absolutely. Okay, sure. Um, yes, I say for the 30, 31, but if anyone has any more topics they'd like to discuss, we're more than welcome to at the end of the presentation. Uh, Route 32 is Orange via Millers Falls and Irving Center. Uh, like I said before, minor travel time adjustments when we leave Greenfield and when we arrive in Orange, vice versa. Um, and the time between this presentation was put up in the internet and now we've actually discovered that we may be servicing East River Street in Orange, which uh, has several housing complexes along it, um, kind of the connector between West River Street and 202 before it be back up to 2. By the airport, if anyone's familiar with that. Yeah. Uh, so this timetable has the same number of trips departing at the same time from Greenfield, and they are arriving on a predictable time schedule back to Greenfield. Uh, right now, it's 
that are all predictable on the, on the schedule, but the, the actual arrival times are not as predictable. This would be adjusting the travel times between Orange and Greenfield and Greenfield and Orange to make the arrival time as predictable as possible. So if the timetable had them arriving at you know, the 45 minute of the hour, but the bus is always ever arriving at the 50 minute of the hour, we've adjusted the travel time allocations within the middle of the schedule to make sure they arrive at the 45 of the hour. A lot more predictable, dependable, reliable. So then take away from the orange. You know, when I get down to it, we are traveling an hour outbound and an hour inbound. So anything can happen in an hour of travel. Uh, but our goal is to make it as reliable as possible. Okay. Uh, for Charlemont, we are adjusting service to GCC, putting it back on the 7 a.m. trip out of downtown Greenfield. So you could take a bus from South Deerfield to downtown Greenfield and have a direct connection to GCC, and then the reverse in the afternoon. Um, right now, all of the connections are a little bit loose at the transit center in downtown Greenfield, so it's a general tightening up of that entire transfer system. Uh, once again, we're picking and choosing when we go to Mohawk High School, the Charlemont Park and Ride, uh, and Charlemont Academy, just to make it work for as many customer bases as possible. Okay. So, do we want to go through the whole thing here? Uh, what time? What time do we have? It's 4:35. Sure. Yeah, we have time. We'll okay. Um, so this is our presentation um, regarding Saturday fixed route services. Currently, FRTA is the only bus system in the state, or our regional transit authority in the state, does not offer any version of any services on weekend. Um, we think that's a travesty, and <laughs> we're really working to fix it. As a background, um, yeah. we had met recently. Uh, with our advisory board to discuss uh, the potential to expand into uh, providing some sort of Saturday service, uh, at least to pilot at the beginning. Uh, we have submitted a request uh, to the state legislature uh, to be included into next fiscal year's budget uh, for a total amount of $180,000 to give us at least a half day's worth of Saturday service um, to pilot for this upcoming fiscal year. So this is just um, an overview of what uh, could potentially be um, a good use for uh, creating routes uh, for Saturday. So again, these are more um, concepts, uh, not, not so uh, uh, hard and fast times and uh, timing of the stops, um, just more of a general idea of what we would look for when we're trying to operate something on the weekend. Yes. So I'm, I'm reading your list here. It looks like it has to do with um, services like shopping and work. Correct. How do you decide to do half a day in that case? So for half a day, it would not be like between 8 and 4. Um, half a day in terms of service, we're looking at about a 9 to 3 service day on most routes. We, we consider it half of what our normal full day schedule would be. So if our full day schedule now during the week uh, the first buses pull out of the yard at uh, 5 in the morning, uh, and then the last bus comes in. Um, they they at leave nine. at 8, and they come in at, at 9. So it would be about a half of a, half of a weekday's day. Yeah. What, I'm, what I'm trying to understand is what exactly do, are we trying to resolve? What, 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 are we, what are we bringing to the people who use the bus? Is it a place, it's obviously not something you could go to, to go listen to some music downtown in Northampton, because that's late at night. Sure. So what is it for exactly? Is it to go shop? This, this is more like lifeline mm -hmm. services to offer access to places on the weekend which are currently not accessible by public transportation. So once we start moving into the, the schedules, you'll see the, the types of things that we're looking to accomplish. I live in Greenfield and I have a number of friends who use paratransit in Greenfield and there's no paratransit service on the weekend. They work during the week and they can't take paratransit to the grocery store or elsewhere on the weekend. So it's for, it's for services like shopping. Okay. Right. Well, we would just paratransit, can... do you mean like demand response? Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's no demand response on weekends either? No. Okay. We don't offer anything on the weekends. That's more important. Mm -hmm. Most mm -hmm. This proposal would include some hours for that. Uh, whatever the service day is for fixed route, we would offer complimentary ADA paratransit services. And what assumptions are you making about federal funding? 
Uh, Michael. <laughs> okay, and what about state funding? Okay, so this is all. We, we, we put in the request. Uh, we're hopeful that, um, that we will get recognized, that we will get funded. Um, one of the strongest cases we can make for ourselves is that we were the only transit authority in the state of Massachusetts that has zero weekend service uh, at all to offer. So we're hoping that will be enough to get enough people's attention on Beacon Hill uh, to hopefully get enough money to pilot something to show that there isn't just an ask, that there's an actual need. Uh, and the, the intention is to build upon that in, into the future moving forward. Um, so we'll be offering four services, four route services in the weekend, something in downtown Greenfield, something connecting Turner's Falls and Greenfield, <coughs> excuse me, as well as Northampton and Orange. So we'd have two of our long haul routes, getting people to and from whatever shopping or employment they have in Orange, as well as downtown Northampton uh, and Greenfield, and obviously vice versa. We would have some version of services in downtown Greenfield and all the community complexes within roughly between 9 a.m. and 4 p.m. Uh, Turner's Falls would have a connector service that you'll see an example of, but again, it's just a rough concept, but it would go from downtown Turner's across Greenfield and end up somewhere on the west side of Greenfield, probably Big Y or GCC somewhere. Uh, and in the middle, making connections to the transit center for people who want to hop on an Orange or Northampton bus. Uh, so for the proposed Greenfield services, we have this model route running from the transit center um, up Federal Street, kind of in the same direction it does during the weekday, but we would limit services to the corporate center that's not open on the weekends, or the RMV that's not open throughout the entire day on the weekends. And it's a, it's, to make the most use of all the monies we receive, we would really need to be very specific as to where we are servicing and where we perhaps do not need to service. For instance, the corporate center. Again, very similar map to what we saw earlier. If you picture it going up the right-hand side of the map, across the top, and down the left-hand side, I would have a counterclockwise travel direction around Greenfield. Does that have it going up Lydon Road, too? It yes. does, the Lydon Woods. Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay. This is the proposed cross-town style service that would be leaving downtown Turner's Falls, perhaps Food City, traveling up and over the Gil Montague Bridge down High Street, across Main Street Greenfield and ending up somewhere on the western end of Greenfield. Uh, this has it leaving uh, BJ's, big, BJ's Big White Plaza, that area. Again, uh, 1030 to 445, so the service day would be 1030 to 545, food city to food city. Yes? You, uh, how about if you're going to do this on Saturday in the summers, mm -hmm. uh, possibility of putting a stop at the at the swing mm -hmm. area in Greenfield? Mm -hmm. The might, uh, the Green might, River. Might service some people that you might not otherwise service? Yep, so we haven't nailed down where the endpoint would be, but that could be a place that's more the general area might, that we want to During the summer, you might pick up some other people during the mm -hmm. week also. Yep. If, if I don't know how close you go. You're going up Light Road, you're not very far from there. I think there may be a challenge with the Nash's Mill Road Bridge until it's repaired. I yeah, I know that the town of Greenfield is putting in uh, to replace the Nash's Mill Bridge uh, over by the swimming pool, and they're also looking to do um, some sidewalk improvements from along Leiden Road and down into the well, anyway, Greenfield swimming pool area. So. If you're looking to pick up sure. people that might be interested, uh, you might pick up people that otherwise can't afford to get there. Oh, absolutely. Yep, so this is the model map. You can see it goes up. Actually, this has it going down Federal Street, but picture for the concept going down High Street to service the hospital. Uh, starting downtown Turner's, up and over the bridge, down and across Greenfield to BJ's Big Y and GCC area. Okay. Uh, for Northampton, we would have four trips per day out of, uh, out of Greenfield, a 9, 11, a 3, and a 5. This is basically for commuter style. You work on the weekend, get to and from Greenfield, Northampton a no frills, get them there, get them back service. It would run the same the routing, no I frills. I don't know what the frills were. <laughs> what are the possible frills? <laughs> um, if you have any ideas, let us know. <laughs> uh, like I said before, it's a commuter style service um, to work for around approximate work times and away from work at approximate end of work times with connections in Greenfield. The orange bus route is the 
same style. Uh, the five o'clock trip would be up in the air as to more of a need base. We'd have to do some more surveys as to whether people actually do need service in Orange going either to or from Greenfield around the five o'clock mark. Um, but again, it's the same idea. We have four trips per day, three or four trips per day for Saturday. Yeah. That is the end of the slideshow. <laughs> Um, so, I didn't catch your first name. My name is John Griffin. I live John. in Greenfield. Well, thank you for uh, I work at UMass. Uh, okay. I came to uh, comment specifically on the proposed changes to the Route 23. The 23. As well yes, as the Montague Route. Yep. Um, I'm a little confused because there seem to be express trips coming from Sunderland up to Greenfield in the morning, but there's no express trips for those of us who commute down to UMass in the morning. Yep. And going out to Miller's Falls just is way, too, way too long of a trip. So you said you live in Greenfield? I live in Greenfield. Okay. Yep. So and I know country. in my own department, I know at least five other people who live in Greenfield commute to UMass every Did you uh, comment on our Facebook page? I did. I also did. Nice to meet you. <laughs> yep. I've been, I've been hoping and I, I've, I've been in contact with you guys for a number of years now. I used to live in Turner's Falls. I was a okay. student at UMass and okay. was hoping for better bus service. And yeah, well, well, I, I really appreciate you coming. Thank yeah, you yeah, I, and I, um, you know, very strongly would like to see um, express trips headed south in the morning, if nothing mm -hmm. else. I mean, my my personal feeling is that the Sunderland route is attempting to do a little bit too much in these changes. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I really think that because under the current model there is this Montague route, I have always sort of envisioned it serving all of Montague and making connections with the Sunderland the Sunderland route for people from either Miller's Falls or elsewhere in Montague who need yeah. to connect to that route, but not then making all of the commuters from Greenfield to UMass also go all the way out to Miller's Falls just to pick up those folks out in Miller's Falls. I think it would be better for them to have a Montague route that brings them to Greenfield and allows them to make a timely connection. So I do want to give you some solace in the fact that the timetable as presented we realize is incredibly broken and inefficient <laughs> as it's been revised. <laughs> Uh, there are quite a lot of, we do get a lot of ridership from Miller's Falls, so we're looking at a couple things. Servicing Miller's Falls on the inbound and the outbound, but perhaps not all day. Mm -hmm. uh, the second option we're kind of looking at is a shuttle between Turner's Falls up and around somewhere in the schools to Miller's as a connector service, a feeder service. Mm -hmm. And then a, a, fourth, a third option, which would be extremely similar to what is currently offered. Mm -hmm. So. I do want to give you some research that this Great. is not what we're going for. Great. I mean, typical you know, staff working hours at UMass generally are 8 to 4, 9 to 5. Mm -hmm. A lot of folks work on 8.30 to 5 as well. So yeah. targeting you know, a 50 to hour long trip in the morning to get there yeah. and maybe a similar, you know, when you consider the transfer as well, because it yeah. takes about half hour to get from Sugarloaf States down to campus. Um, a little bit less. So I, I would challenge, I would say it's only 15. Um, I was a bus driver for Mass Transit for a while. Fair enough. So yeah. I, no, I, I, and I, will, I don't know because I, I haven't actually made yeah. that, um, you know, I, I haven't been able to really make yeah. that trip because I'm um, So the, the 31, the, the, yeah, the, uh, the PBTA Route 31 um, travel time between Sugarloaf Estates and GRC Mass is mm -hmm. only 15 minutes. Sure. It leaves on the hour, 15, half hour, every 15 minutes and then arrives yeah. in the following 15 minutes. Yeah. Uh, I think the, connecting with, with the Sunderland route is a fantastic yeah. idea. I've always been frustrated yeah. by there's this park and ride across the river that seems kind of neglected, especially kind of by the PVTA. Yeah. And uh, it's, the, the yeah, they, they provide such better service, service to, to Sugarloaf, yeah. Right. We've been getting a lot of comments on the Sunderland route specifically and, and travel around Turner's Falls, mm -hmm. uh, including Miller's Falls as well. Um, this uh, original iteration, uh, we have been taking back after every public meeting, <laughs> just try to see if there's a better way that we can move people. Um, and there's a lot of challenges with that. You know, okay, we're, yeah. we're being challenged um, by, by, the, by our, our board, um, as well as what we feel our fiscal constraints are going to be moving next year moving forward. Mm -hmm. So we're really trying to serve as many people as we can mm -hmm. with as little resources as possible. Mm -hmm. um, so at the end of the day, there is going to be some give and take. I can't say what that is at that point. Yep. Um, but we have heard several comments, much like yours, to say, is there a way we can get to Sunderland faster? Mm -hmm. um, but that we've also had a lot of, uh, please make sure 
you travel through downtown Turner's Falls. Please make sure you go to Miller's Falls. Mm -hmm. Please make sure you know we can we can get to um, the the high school or the tech school or the industrial park for businesses. So we're trying to uh, weigh all of these factors and yeah. see if if there's another way that we can accomplish all of these things. And my goal, um, I'm, not, I'm not trying to argue that, oh, that no, UMass no, commuters no. should be served at the expense no. of other commuters. Th this um, is this is the opportunity where yeah. we wanted to get feedback such as that, so that way we can. If there's a way we can find something to make it better, um, mm -hmm. we want to work on that now. So when we're presenting to our board, we can we can take in all of these comments and say, you know, here's here's the best plan we can come up with. Yeah. Just as a closing remark, I would uh, say that uh, you know maybe have a little faith in us UMass folks, and if you give us a service that works well for us, you might see some extra revenue from ridership there. We agree. Hopefully. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, Bob first, though, first. I just want to make it. I, I know, I'm talking. Talk to you. hand up for a while. Uh, the uh, town of Leverett, the town of Sunderland, mm -hmm. the city of Northampton do not belong to the Regional Transit Authority. Correct. So, by the, for the graces of the rest of the members of the towns, absent of any grants, they're picking up the cost to service those areas. And uh, it it's, can be a considerable cost. Mm -hmm. So uh, they can now join, as of recent legislation, they can vote to join the Regional Transit Authority, but I don't think there's any positive movement on that. Unfortunately, I don't live in Sunderland, so I can't. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Can I assume that there's some routes that don't pay for themselves and some routes that pay for more than themselves? None of them pay for themselves. <laughs> None of them pay for no. themselves. No, no, no. They all need to be subsidized. So here's, okay. So my question is about marketing your services mm -hmm. to more than the people who desperately need it. I'm a case in point. I'm prepared to leave my car at home and see the Pioneer Valley. How are you going to market it to people like me who don't necessarily think about it? some cool way of marketing. Do you have people on staff to do that? <laughs> you do not. Staff is Larry Lemon. <laughs> you might reach out to the public, to the public who uses you, in fact, to see if there are people. You might turn it into a contest, in fact. You might use the newspapers to create this contest. I'm already prepared to come up with an idea that I'll throw out at you right now. Okay. If you take the trouble to figure out something that I want to, that I might want to see in Northampton, mm -hmm. and I can get there, see this thing, and get home, mm -hmm. and show me that I can do that in a very cute ad that shows up on the radio or wherever, mm -hmm. or the public access TV, for instance. Mm -hmm. uh, You'd catch my attention because that's precisely what I want to do. I'm fortunate. I'm past. I'm retired. I don't need to be on somebody else's schedule. But if you show me how I can use that, you know, oh, there's a obviously it's not going to work for um, late night music, but something else, yep. you know. Oh, there's an opening at such and such a gallery. I don't know in Northampton. You can get there for the opening and get back home. For dinner, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I would second that. I think that would be a great idea. Yeah. Show us what we don't know. Yeah, yeah. Because if you leave us to figure it out, it seems daunting to look at these well, schedules. Part, part it's of ironic, the I think, or not ironic, whatever it is, coincidental, but our energy committee is meeting in there. Oh. That to me is an, an opportunity to take what Jane has suggested, work with them, use their energy to <laughs> promote people leaving their car at home and, mm -hmm. and you know, I think that's a way to get. But if you, you know, came up that. with some some things like I haven't got a clue what to see in orange, but if you told me <laughs> there's this thing to see in orange, yeah. and I have a day to myself, and what does it cost to take the trip? Dollar twenty five. Dollar twenty five. A dollar twenty. A two dollars and fifty cents. I get to go to orange, see this thingamajig, and get home. But they're going to sell you a passport. How much? $30? $30 a month. We're going to add yes, that back in. finally. <laughs> it's a worthy cause. Yes. Yeah, but I can also buy just can a I, ticket. Correct. Yes. Okay. yes. Part, part of the double-edged sword is, um, you know, our, our budget doesn't have uh, money for marketing. So, contest. 
So thank you, thank you. So what I, I was and going to. Are you a nonprofit organization? Yes. Okay. So what I was so, going to suggest was anyone out in TV land, if they have um, the knowledge and expertise, uh, please do reach out to us because we need all the help we can get. One more. I, I suggest you do a little reach out too, like for instance to. Wait a minute, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> all, the high, all the high schools have audio visual departments where the kids are learning how to use the public access TV and, and make PSAs. Mm -hmm. Let them do the work for you. But you got to tell them that you're interested. The access Channel could do it with the kids, make a production, little commercial. Yeah. Or if you just find or businesses that might mention, you can take the bus to us. No. That's right. Yeah. I was just going to ask if you have extra bus schedules that we could put out here because I don't see any on our table. Oh, I can have some. So that we could use that in one other thing and then I'll, I'll go because I have to. Um, do you have um, bike racks on the front of your buses on any of your buses or yes, all of your buses? All buses? Great. Thank you. Well, Michael, follow up to Jane's idea. What she's talking about is maybe taking your demand response buses and prioritize them for something in that nature where you take your demand response, you get 15 people that want to go to this concert, and maybe you could repurpose and do something a little bit like that because you do have the vehicles and the chances are they're not being used at 9 o'clock, 7 o'clock at night to go to anything at this present time. It's the cost of the bus and all that. But maybe, maybe that might, thinking out of the box, maybe that might provide something. Mr. Griffin, Griffin mm -hmm. his idea was very good too. You, you contact all the businesses along the way. So you mentioned earlier uh, uh, the Butterfly Museum. Mm. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> there are people who are coming from Northampton. They're, they're dragging their kids up to, to this thing. They're spending the money to get into the thing, which is not inexpensive. It's a much more interesting thing to take a kid this age on a bus to go see the, 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 the Butterfly Museum than to push them into your car, and you've got That's now, I don't know what a kid costs, but you know, you've got to call in a few minutes. contact all the businesses you pass and ask them to help you. Some of them will have marketing people working for them. Those are great ideas. Did you write them all down? Yeah. They're, They're being mean, recorded. Being taped. <laughs> being taped. <laughs> being taped. <laughs> I'm sorry to be late. Yes, sir. Oh, no worries. I have a question. I don't know if this was. Do you have small vehicles, too, not just, you know, large? Ones. We, we have all different sizes, yes. If they made it, we own it. I don't know if this was brought up, and I, it, it may fit in somehow. We're going to have a tremendous need in this town. Oh, I Cumberland the Farms? Cumberland the Farms? Condoms. <laughs> well, Cumberland Farms is to come downtown. And a lot of old people who use it as their place to buy food, believe it or not. That's it. Hmm. It's moving at the intersection. You know, you're coming off the 405 and 10, 116. Oh, okay. right? Elman, 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 if that's within your purview, or to not, you know, because it's going to be in demand to get to places mm -hmm. for seniors. Sure. Uh, the, not part of this discussion tonight, but the, we do provide um, services for seniors, and, and we can um, look at those types of things. Yes. Thank you, Michael, for all your time and your thoughts. Well, thank you thank all you for attending. coming out today. Yeah. So, and we appreciate your comments. Absolutely. At least you've had people show up. At least we have people show up. Yes, you did. So you don't have bus schedules. We do have bus schedules. So um, oh. we can, yeah, we can certainly adjourn to the back of the room. There's um, some, some paper and pens if you want to leave written comments. I do have some current schedules. Um, there's nothing to take home. Little flyer type I, ones? Yep, I can get some. Okay.